I'm going to give you five tips from the best players that have ever walked our fairways. Today we've got some real nuggets and if these tips were good enough for them, they're certainly good enough for us. Okay, tip number one. We're going to start with tip number one and this is from Rory McIlroy and Rory McIlroy is renowned for such hitting the ball such magnificent distances off the tee and he sends the ball miles down the fairway. So what his tip and how he does that and what he tries to create to get that power is he needs width in the backswing. And what we mean by width in the backswing is this left arm is what he works on. He wants to get this left arm nice and wide on the way back. And what that does, it just gives him that room and a lot more turn and run up and power to get that through the ball. That speed through the ball is going to give him more speed and power. So he needs that width. If you get cramped in, a bit like a boxer in the corner, he can't get the punches in, he needs that width and that room to, to, to release that power. This is the same. This is you building up a run up at the ball. So you need that wide power there. Now a way to create that is just put your club on the floor, put your left hand down, your glove hand, and put your right hand behind it like this. And all I want you to do is just, with your right hand, just sort of pull your left hand up over your shoulder and straight away you're creating that width. So you're getting the feel of where that is. The more you do that two or three times, then pick the driver up and try and repeat that move. Try and, that's the feel that I've just done. Yeah, that's it there, to the top. Then get the driver and create that width. Once I've got that width, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to go with it. I need to keep over the shot and get, just get my arms creating the width. So keeping your head still over the ball and getting that width. Okay, let's give it a go. Nice and wide on the way back. Gives more power to generate on the way through. Just like Rory. Okay, so tip number two is from my uh, boyhood hero, Nick Faldo. Nick Fowler was a perfectionist and a phenomenal golfer and, and he would talk about the use of alignment. So you'd use alignment sticks or golf clubs. And he, would, he was talking about how he would play in pro-arms and the guy would stand on the tee and he'd hit this great shot and he'd go straight into the middle of the trees and he would, he would say to him, great shot, and they'd look at him. He went, you've hit that exactly where you're aiming. He said, so if you look at the players that you are playing with at a weekend, you will see a lot of these people don't even aim correctly. This is a fundamental to playing better golf. You have got to get this right and it's easily fixed. You don't need to be, you're just spending hours, you just need to keep re refreshing yourself of re where square is, where the right stance is. And the easiest way to do it is get an alignment stick or a golf club will do the job. Now what happens is, if you don't use this, you'll go to the practice ground, you'll go to the range, and you'll hit shots. And what our body does, it finds ways of finding the target. Don't forget you've got a bucket of balls of 50 there. You hit a shot, you slowly adapt, and your body will find ways of hitting it on target, and you'll think, I'm fantastic, I'm hitting it great, I'm ready for the comp on Saturday. You turn up for the comp on Saturday, and all of a sudden, you're in a different position. You haven't got that third, fourth, fifth shot to, to try and recover and try and put right your errors and it doesn't work. And you, can't, you look there, get confused. How was it so good at the range? And now it's not because your alignment is poor. What happened is your body adapted to the situation because that's what it does. But we've got to get used to being what is square. So what we do is it's such a simple drill, but it's so effective. It's literally just every time you hit shots in the net, if you hit swing in the garden, is put a cane down on the floor. And what you're trying to create is a tram line effect. So this effect, we know that this is aiming now at the target. So if I get my feet the right distance from the stick, which is equal distance, I don't want to stand like this, and I certainly don't want to stand like this. I want equal distance from my feet, my knees, my hips, and my shoulders. I know now I'm in the best position to hit a good golf shot. If I'm in lined off, I've got to now compensate that. And sometimes I will, and sometimes I won't, but I won't understand why. And because we can't see ourselves, this is the best way of self-checking. So we line ourselves up, we set ourselves into the shot, club face is square, we give ourselves equal distance, and we go feet, knees, hips, chest, everything's nice and square now to the target and we just swing down that line. Now, first of all, you will hit some shots, 
that go all over, because that'll feel awkward to you, because not many people will stand nice and square. So this will feel awkward, so it'll take you, you'll think, I'm aiming the wrong way here, because you're not used to that. So get used to that position, hit some shots, don't worry if it's not so great, you'll start to, like I said earlier, your body will adapt to being square, and then shots will become better. So let's hit one, nice and square with the feet, check the, the knees, check the hips and the shoulders, and when you're feeling good, pull the trigger. Keep repeating that shot, keep hitting them shots, don't worry at first if it's not good, and then take that onto the course and your golf will improve. Okay, so tip number three. Tip number three is Tiger Woods. Uh, obviously one of the best that there's, there's ever been. And what his tip was, his, the drill he likes to work on, when he, certainly when he was working with Butch Harmon, is he likes to get the feel of stopping at the top. So he'd go to the top of the backswing, stop, because he used to spin out too much. So what he wants to create is his hands in front of his body. Now, but this drill will work for everybody because what I see is a lot of players don't know where the top is or they never actually reach the top. So they're always in the top of the backswing and then they're on the way down. They never really know where that is. So by having that little stop at the top, it's giving you a reference of where the end of the swing is. So I would really build this into a practice swing first because it's not an easy drill. And again, if you look at someone like Tiger Woods, what he did is he wanted to feel that his hands got in front of his body. He never actually got there. It was a feeling that he wanted to get. He didn't get anywhere near. And that's what I'm saying is when you're swinging the golf club, you're not always doing what you think you're doing. So you've got to have little pointers, little references where you know where the top of that swing is, you've completed your swing, and now you can deliver the downswing on the way in. Most or a lot of bad shots are caused at club level just by the anxiety of the shot. They want to get it over with, they're not comfortable with it. They don't complete the backswing and everything's out of timing. So this drill is perfect if you're that kind of player. So what I want you to do is I just want you to go to the top of the swing, take your normal stance, go to the top, feel the top, and then execute the shot. Now you can do this in the net and do it at the range. We're gonna hit one here now, but it's not an easy drill. So you'll hit some poor shots, but just stick with it because it'll start over time, do it with practice swings, it'll start to bed into your game. You don't do this out on the course, you just do this as a practice swing and in, and in practice. Okay, to the top, feel the end of the back swing, and then start on the way down. Feel it, hit it. Take this tip to the practice ground, into the nets, and you'll start to get that reference of where the top of the back swing is, and you'll create a better swing all round. Okay, so now we're on to tip four. Uh, and these, all these players are obviously the world's best. So we're now working with Jack Nicholas. Now Jack Nicholas's tip was he wanted to have good footwork. So this happens, I always, I teach it this when I'm giving lessons, I talk about other sports. And in other sports, I always say, if you think about a boxer, he has great footwork. If you think about a tennis player, footballers, when the football, they, they generate room by creating good footwork. So if you watch a, a Sunday league team, some of the players there, they don't have such great football footwork and they lose control of what they're trying to do and it looks poor and the outcome is usually lost control. And that's exactly what this does. So you get sort of three kinds of players really, people with good footwork, like a lot of all the top players in the world. And then you get the person who is overactive with his footwork. So he, he gets a wild shot. It could be good and it can certainly be ugly, but he has this wild footwork and that can go anywhere. And then you get the next person who's, I need to keep still over the ball, stand still, don't hit, don't move and hit that shot. And again, all these outcomes are creating inconsistencies. Some are good, some are bad. Certainly not getting the potential out, potential out of the shot. What you want to do and what the top players do is you want to feel that you are keeping your body over the ball like we see in all our other videos, but feel that you are rolling your feet. So you're going to roll it onto your right and then roll it off onto your left. And now you're knowing that you're transferring your weight properly. So you're, again, not losing any power. You're keeping over the ball. You're rolling onto your right side and then you're rolling your foot off onto your left side. If you watch the top players, 
do this in action, you'll see that move. You'll see, and this is a move that, like Jack Nicholas did, but they still do this. They still create fabulous, fabulous footwork. So you want to feel that you are rolling onto your right and then you're rolling up off onto your left side. Okay, let's give that a go. What you get there is a much crisper strike, much more powerful strike and a better shot all round. Okay, so tip number five is old Spanish hands himself, the great Sevi Ballesteros. Now he was phenomenally good around the green. So his tip is obviously going to be, and his, his tip to everyone is going to be about chipping. So what he liked to do and what we see a lot of is in this shot is the person stands too square onto target. Now, if you put a line through the ball, we're now aiming right. So straight away, we're not even aiming at the target. And because of that, we've either got to get out of the way or we don't get out of the way and they'll get the hands and the body involved in something that they don't need to do. So set that already at address. So what Sevi liked to do is he would open up. So he'd open his feet up, he'd open his hips up and he'd open his chest up. And straight away now he's, he's got that path right through to the shot. And then what he could do, he's gripped down the club a little bit, but he'd have firm wrists. So what firm wrists is requiring is you're not flipping. And a lot of people get too involved in this. Just keep them wrists as they're set and just rock the shoulders and let the club just slide. You're keeping the loft on the club and it's sliding under the ball and hitting the shot. So you can be, you see these top players, they're quite aggressive with this shot and that's because the loft's going to play the shot for them. So opening it up, chest, hips, feet, a little bit firmer with the wrists and then just letting the loft play the shot, okay? Trust it, go through with speed and you'll be good. Okay, one more. Opening up, grip down the shaft, firmer with the grip. Now you could play this with all sorts of shots, okay? So we're going to try it with 9-9. Nine nine. He was a master at this. He could play this with anything he wanted, but the technique was the same. The 9-9, nine nine, what that's going to do, he's obviously got less loft. So that's going to go in lower for us and run out a little bit more. And you've got to decide, I always, I always like to chip with loft, but you, you, you choose yourself what you like. So same again, opening up, hips, shoulders, gripping down the club, firm with the wrist and let the loft just run it in. So it's going to go in lower and run more. Same again, it's just going to go in lower and it's going to run more. So you've got to find out which shot gives you the most results, which gives you the best results, and go with that. But use that technique that was good enough for Seve, it's good enough for us. Bonus time. So some of you will remember the video we did about the, with the box, the free training aid, where here's another one. If you haven't seen that, go and watch that video. And again, come back to this. And this is a great little bonus tip for you using that free training aid. So some of you might see these balls that are out now, the, the, the two-sided balls, but you don't need this. You can just put a line on your ball, put a line right around the middle of the ball. And that's going to give you some feedback of the roll of the putt. This is going to make you hit more consistent putts, start hitting the putt straighter, better strikes, and it's giving you that feedback. If the ball's wobbling about, you want this ball to turn end over end and try and keep that line nice and straight. The box is going to be there again as our wall. It's going to give us some feedback of a nice stroke, keeping it still. So again, we want to, sometimes I would draw a line on the box, again, just so I know my head is nice and still. That's quite a nice little tip, just to draw a line. And you're trying to keep your, your head over that. You don't want too much movement in this shot. And all you're going to do is leave it, keep it nice and tight, that wall, and try and get that ball to roll end over end into the hole without hitting the box. So the more you do this, the more you get this roll, this strike, it's going to give you better puts, better consistency of strike, lower scores. Have a look at the other videos, give us some feedback, and I'll see you next time.